name is Greg Johnson. I am the curator for the Blues Archive. Mm -hmm. I guess my official title is Blues Curator and Associate Professor. Yeah, so there is a lot of hill country blues it's often juxtaposed against like Delta Blues or maybe even Chicago Blues where we have typically a lot of those forms, the most prevalent sort of harmonic progressions are 12 bar blues. So you have 12 measures of music and there's typically three chords, a one chord, a four chord, a five chord or tonic, subdominant, dominant. And those change at certain times within that structure. <laughs> A lot of hill country blues, a lot of it stays in one chord or kind of one tonality. So you're not having that change from the one chord to the four chord and then up to the five and back to the four and all that. You kind of get this groove going. Um, I think it was Jesse May Hemphill who called it the hypnotic boogie. You've got this dance groove that's kind of that's going and you and you just that just keeps going throughout the song. And you you know, superficially you think one chord, that's gotta be boring. But it's not, it's a rhythmic drive. One thing that definitely influenced a lot of the Hill Country players is the um, African-American fife and drum tradition. And that we find at one point it existed throughout parts of uh, the southeastern U.S. Uh, George Mitchell and others documented this, some of these, these bands in the 60s. And, but it kind of died out everywhere except pretty small area in North Mississippi and um, really was mostly associated with um, the Turner family. I mean the last big patriarch of this was Otha Turner and he's sort of now uh, his granddaughter Charday carrying on this tradition a little bit but so we see this, this I guess we look at the African American fife and drum tradition which uses just like a cane, fife and percussion instruments and that's it. There are no there's no harmonic instrument in this music. There's no, there's no guitar typically driving that and changing chords or anything. If there's any harmonies, it, it's implied in the melodic contour of, you know, what the fife is playing. When a lot of people are thinking about the Hill Country Blues, the first names that come to mind are R.L. Burnside and Junior Kimbrough. They're really at the core of this Hill Country Blues sound. And earlier than them, and, and sort of contemporary with some of R.L. Burnside's first recordings was um, Mississippi Fred McDowell uh, from Como. His sound really lent itself to a huge influence on, on uh, R.L. Burnside and, and the Hill Country uh, sound in general. That real rhythmic drive that he had, I think. It's one of the big influences. You know, we see a lot of a lot of the greater Burnside and Kimbrough families. I mean, children, um, grandchildren, nephews. Um, so you know, Dwayne, Gary, they're these these kind of like hill country blues families. You know, and, and even if you extend beyond the the biological family, I mean, we can look at you know. Kenny Brown as, as you know, uh, a true descendant of, of these, these styles. I mean, he was really taken under, under the wing of um, Arnold Burnside. And then we see uh, Eric Deaton now, who's really, um, you know, really taken in by Junior Kimbrough. I mean, you can see him as really kind of a descendant of his tradition. So both uh, familial and like biological, but also the greater sort of hill country blues family. A lot of a lot of folks kind of have gotten taken into that that greater family. I would say, in terms of financial success, the most successful hill country musicians would be the North Mississippi All Stars right now. I think, I mean, they've had quite a bit of success on big touring circuits all over. The 
Dwayne Burnside has had a very good career. And, uh, you know, you'll hear Dwayne, he can play the hell out of the Hill Country Blues, but he also, he does his own thing. He plays other styles of blues as well. You know, just because he's, you know, associated with the Hill Country Blues doesn't mean he stays in that tradition. You know, he's um, playing some real heavy electric guitar solos. They're closer to some of the Chicago guys and, and others. Um, yeah, outs, outside of the Hill Country tradition, where, where there's an emphasis, more of an emphasis on the guitar solo, necessarily as opposed to the guitar driving the rhythm that you see in a lot of the, the Hill Country uh, traditions. Yeah, the original patriarchs of this this whole form they have passed on, but the the tradition continues. And and you know there is uh, some of the descendants of the Hill Country tradition are still playing very much in the style of R.L. and Junior, but there's also some branching out. And you know, and bringing some other elements into it. Um, I saw a few years ago. I saw a little bit of a hill country hip hop fusion, a little bit. Um, you know, I mean, it's just it's just natural. You know, things change. You know, and I want to make some pithy statement about the blues will never die. It's gonna it'll always be here. But you know, I mean, we're people in uh, the Middle Ages saying that uh, these uh, re recorder and sackbutt tunes. They're gonna be here forever. They will never die. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, and, and obviously, yeah, there are still people playing, you know, uh, early music ensembles, but it, but it's kind of, it's in a sense, it's um, you can see it as a museum piece. You know, it's people bringing back these early traditions. But I still see the Hill Country Blues, at least today, and, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. This is, it's a communal music, you know, it's as, this is music that you see in juke joints or modern variants of what we, you know, of, of the juke joint. Um, and people, communities coming together, dancing, having a great time. You know, this is, and it's still a very vibrant tradition. People are really into, into this music, not as some, we're gonna preserve this, this style and play it exactly the same way that, you know, grandpa played. This is, we're gonna make it our own, and um, and people are loving it, you know? It's it's not like people are thinking back, this is this is old music. This is, this is very relevant music for today. No, I gotta do one my day, that's all. Oh, my dear. 